Isaiah chapter 16. Send lambs to the ruler of the land, from Selah in the desert to the mountain of daughter Zion. Like a bird fleeing, forced from the nest, the daughters of Moab will be at the fords of the Arnon. Give us counsel and make a decision. Shelter us at noonday with shade that is as dark as night. Hide the refugees. Do not betray the one who flees. Let my refugees stay with you. Be a refuge for Moab from the aggressor. When the oppressor has gone, destruction has ended, and marauders have vanished from the land, a throne will be established in love, and one will sit on it faithfully in the tent of David, judging and pursuing what is right, quick to execute justice. We have heard of Moab's pride, how very proud he is, his haughtiness, his pride, his arrogance, and his empty boasting. Therefore let Moab wail. Let every one of them wail for Moab. You who are completely devastated, mourn for the raisin cakes of Kira Reseth. For Heshbon's terraced vineyards and the grapevines of Sibma have withered. The rulers of the nations have trampled its choice vines that reached as far as Jazer and spread to the desert. Their shoots spread out and reached the sea. So I join with Jazer to weep for the vines of Sibma. I drench Heshbon and Eliela with my tears. Triumph shouts have fallen silent over your summer fruit and your harvest. Joy and rejoicing have been removed from the orchard. No one is singing or shouting for joy in the vineyards. No one tramples grapes in the wine presses. I have put an end to the shouting. Therefore I moan like the sound of a lyre for Moab, as does my innermost being for Kerhiris. When Moab appears and tires himself out on the high place and comes to his sanctuary to pray, it will do him no good. This is the message that the Lord previously announced about Moab. And now the Lord says, In three years, as a hired worker counts years, Moab's splendor will become an object of contempt, in spite of a very large population, and those who are left will be few and weak.